Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and may peace be upon you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the show. Yes, I can with me, your host, Dr. Izzihar Jamil. And today I have the beautiful, the inspirational, the strong and courageous Sierra Malka, who is the founder of Red Thread Publishing. She's also a number one international best-selling author of How Change Really Happens. Sierra, darling, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Izzy. I'm so glad to be here as always with you and your audience. Thanks for inviting me. It's my absolute pleasure. And Sierra, she has a really intimate, really nurturing and supportive publishing group called the Red Threat Publishing. And so when I first met Sierra, she, she, her, her, her daughter was still young then. And she's like, oh, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just in the process of writing a book. And a few years later, when we got reconnected back again, she has this publishing house, she has this team, she has helped so many authors, female entrepreneurs or female professional authors to share their voices, um, share their voices, share their stories, make an impact, create a legacy in their life. What amazing, you know, step from, oh, I'm just doing this to this within a short period of time. And that's something that I wanted to discuss with Sierra today. What was her journey? What was the turning point like her journey in creating this intimate but impactful um, publishing house? So Sierra, let's start with the beginning. When we, when you and I just first got connected with each other, you just, you know, your daughter was, I think, two years old or something like that, right? You know, like she was, she was still young and you were little writing baby. a book. Yeah, she was a little <clears throat> baby. So what was the turning point to being there? to coming to be the founder of Red Thread Publishing? Was it an experience that you that you went through yourself? Um, was it something just like happened? You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this this way. So what was it, Sierra? And I, I love this question um, because I think this is so important for us to be sharing, um, to identify it for ourselves and model it for others because um, there's never, for me, it has never been a single turning point. It's Actually, it's the small ones that add up to uh, a full revolution, right? A 180 degree turn, um, if I take it all at once, is really actually quite traumatic. And so my turning points have all have been um, smaller, but I can recognize them before they become cataclysmic. And I, but um, I've come to see turning points as actually almost every time I'm face down, every time something is really not working. I've come to see that not always in the moment, but as a gift, it's an invitation to something else. Um, so like you said, uh, I was a single mother of a small daughter. I had been a history teacher for 15 years. And so the context of teaching about who we are was really important. It was a very grounding foundation for me. But even with my best efforts, most of those stories were still about men, written by men. And even when I was really trying, there was, there was a shortage, in my opinion, of stories that were relatable to half of the population of the planet. And, and so I was really struggling with that even 20 years ago as a teacher. But when my daughter was born, it, it threw it into a, a more urgent contrast of, I want this to be different in 12 years when she's in high school. And I needed to do something about it. Something, again, significant, but I didn't have to change the world all by myself. If I demonstrated and practiced what I believed to be true in my own household, then I made it true on you know, this, this sort of holographic universe. If it's true here, it's true everywhere. And that gave me permission to make the change that I needed to make. Previously, I thought 
big change had to be on a big scale. And that was terrifying. It was overwhelming and I was paralyzed actually. So the turning points were little, but to get to this point, I, I had to step forward into this dream to write and publish. And through doing that and being all sort of self-taught and learning all these different avenues and discovering what was sort of missing from each of those avenues, I really felt called again as a teacher to demonstrate to other women that it's not nearly as hard as I thought it was. It's not nearly as hard as they all keep telling me they think it is that what if writing and publishing is easy? What if becoming a thought leader and changing the world, even if it's only this tiny little piece of the world can be easeful, not just easy, but easeful. And so that, that combination of, of little moves, again, in red, respect, they seem little, they seemed big, right? Um, until we've done it, it seems insurmountable and then it seems easy. That is absolutely beautiful. And what a beautiful dream to like, what if writing and publishing is easy? What if this is possible? What if I'm sharing the voices of women who have been in the background for so long, even if um, I remember before, like um, in the books before, it was always the man, you know, whether it's Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, I mean, they're really, really good, right? They're but, great men. They're yeah, great but, men, but they, they, they're sharing it, uh, they're telling a, a, a population, women population, this is how things should be. I'm like, yes. no, like you have balls, we have ovaries, right? So it's like different. So it's like the way that we kind of work, the way, um, you know, like a man telling me, no, don't have to look after the kids, hire this, hire this, hire that. No, I want to cook for my family. I don't want to do this. I want to do this. But, and still, I want to have this. And I think what you have, like the dream is so beautiful. And I love about the fact that you said your turning point has been small. Like it's not, you know, some people get it like in a mad truck, right? Like a boom kind of thing, like when they didn't listen. But you're right. kind of like, it's little things, little things, little things. Can you like share your experience in the sense when those little things come? If it can be really scary, Sierra, you doubting oh. yourself. Is it the right way? Is it this way? Oh, you know what? I, I don't, I think that's a fluke. I don't think that's, you know, it's just some a coincidence. Can you give us an example, like, and kind of like talk us through just a little bit, give us a little bit of tips when yeah. an opening happens, what should you do? Like, who should you be? Like, what should you right. listen, even if you're scared? Okay. Well, so that even if you're scared, uh, it's guaranteed. If it's important, if this is a, a whisper or a nudge or a Mack truck and you're scared, it's something that's important. And I talk to our authors about this all the time because inevitably when we step forward, when we are in a space we've never been in before, and when we are sharing ourselves, we're scared, inevitably. And um, I'm going to just tell a quick little story and then make sure I do properly answer your question. <laughs> We had an author who was putting out a, pub, a poetry collection with us. She's got a 40 year poetry career. She's an incredible force of nature. And we put together her book the night before it came out. She had a total freak out meltdown. I don't think we should do this. Can we take it off the shelves? Never mind. I'm just kidding. I actually don't want this book out there. But she knew, she said, I'm going to freak out so that you can know how to help your future authors not to freak out in this moment. And I said, actually, you know what? Nope, this freak out is the required step. You must have, you must pass through this fire to arrive as the published author to be more proud on the other end. We talk about book writing and publishing especially we're an all-female publishing house. We talk about ovaries. We talk about cycles. 
um, we talk about the birthing process. And when you are putting a book into the world, you are birthing something. And labor <laughs> hurts. It's terrifying. You're pretty sure you cannot do it. And then it's done. And then you are a parent. Your identity changes through the transformation that you experience. And to, to remove that, um, that challenge is actually to weaken the person you're becoming. So I never, I create the container and say, this is exactly the natural phases of this process. You will arrive here. And when you do, I want you to know that this is actually your success in the making. It doesn't feel like it yet, but I, I start training our author's um, minds to instead of feel like that, that panic is a sign of failure or that panic is a sign of something wrong, it is actually the sign that you are just arriving at your next iteration of self. And that has been my experience as well. Um, when, you, when you're at a crossroads and you could do what you know how to do, or you could do this thing that you're being called to do, You, you talked about how sort of how quickly I went from not being an author to being an author to owning a publishing company by accelerating this process of growth that we do. Anyone can, anyone, I do believe this, anyone can write a book. Anyone can learn how to publish. Anyone who desires to be can become a thought leader. It might take 10 years for each of those steps. So many women come and they said, I've been trying to write this book for 10 years. What we do is we say, you don't wanna be pregnant for 10 years, honey. Let's like, let's condense this process and get you to the next part. And that is terrifying, but we're moving through the doubt, the fear by actually it's that community that we have because if you were the only one who's ever given birth and you've never spoken to another woman about giving birth, it's a total mystery. But if you know a bunch of women who have been pregnant and given birth, if you've attended a birth or 10 and you know exactly how it goes, when you show up at that moment in your life, you're prepared in a different way. And so we, create this community and share our own writing, publishing, sort of self-birthing processes to, to prepare one another and to create the, the courage to go through that fire and say, okay, I, have, I don't know who I'm gonna be on the other side of this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And, and failure, actually, I was having a conversation the other day on a radio interview about this, but failure isn't trying and then having it not work out. My understanding of failure is staying in the same path because you're too afraid to actually fail. So failure is, is just the not trying and the holding back because women have so many powerful stories to share. Um, I wanna support that container to move them through these natural processes um, at an accelerated pace. That is absolutely incredible. You know, and when you said about, you know, that particular author, right? Kind of, no, I want to pull back. I think that is part of growth. That is part, that is part of living, you know? Some people call it freaking out. Some people call it scary. Some people call it resistance, whatever it is. Like, you know, that part of your life is going to come. It comes in different ways. Um, different ways, different people, or different circumstances. And then quite a few people pull back when they fit that resistance, right? It was me back. for years, right? For years. Exactly. Like, even like the same with me, like we pull back. Like, oh, no, not ready yet, this. But actually, the key is when you have the courage and the faith to push through. That's going to like 
the next one. That's where, you know, things are uh, meant for you. Not, not meant for you, but there are other things beyond the resistance that, um, that are better or good or a little, it can be scary again, um, because I, you know, next week I'm gonna be having my book out, Money Makers. It's a book that I think it's a book that I wrote when I was eight months pregnant. And you know, when you were eight months pregnant, you can't sit well, your back hurts, you have to pee every 10 minutes. I'm like, I can't sit for so long, you know? But I want to write. So I figured out a way to write in 72 hours. Yep. And um, but then I'm like, and, and then I left it with a baby. But I'm like, no, I didn't think it's good enough because I wrote it in that amount. I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I was like, right. no, I don't think like even though I have multiple books to my name, I still had that doubt, right? To the point I'm like, I don't care. This is what I felt. I'm going to make it happen and, you know, putting it together, finding the team member and picking it together. Resistance is always going to happen. Resistance, freaking out, scary, pulling back. But the key is to have faith in yourself and have the faith in people around you. And you talked about that as well, because you said we're a team of women who supports other women. Yeah. So would you say that having that people around you that you trust that you know are not people pleaser if if you would have said to the author oh, don't worry darling it's okay we'll just follow your lead oh my god that lady for 20 30 40 years whatever it is she might she might feel something she might feel like at that time oh yeah i'm right but actually in her heart she knows so talk us about that because I notice that sometimes working with women is one of the best and the most powerful thing. But at times when certain type of women, it's one of the toxic things. Mm -hmm. And that can, you know, put off some, some women to go forward. So talk us through in terms of navigating through that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know our, our, our deepest mission, right? Right? Red Thread has successful published authors and thought leaders. Okay, that's the grounded motivation. And we each hit these moments of fear, but if someone shows up to us and says, I want to write my book, I want to publish my book, that's the, the seed, right? That is the, the truth of their, their motivation. And it is writing this book and you know, publishing a book, as you know, because you do this and you support other people to do this, it is a, it's an external logistic accomplishment. It is a piece of credibility. It is, here's the authority on which I speak now, but it is always also a personal and like soul evolution it is a transformational journey that we go on. And we, we always approach it this way because we're not gonna let someone not finish. The, the finish line, we might change a publishing date because the, the pieces of that success aren't ready, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna let someone bail on themselves. And this is that difference about working as a community and working individually and why coming together can move us forward faster. Um, because we're not alone. And we as individuals, yourself, 11 best-selling books, we still don't see ourselves the way others see us. When we know something, Invariably, it's, oh, well, that's not important. Doesn't everybody know this? We've lost the perspective of how valuable our, our message is. And this is why we need the reflection of other people around us, other people in that pursuit, other healthy people. Um, and, and to answer your question or to address your question, navigate. 
creating a community of women, just of a relationship with themselves, with one another. Um, it can be certainly challenging, but we, we learn together. And like we've been talking about this whole time, it's not let's avoid the challenges. It's let's dig into these challenges and find out where this struggle is so that we can be stronger individually and together. So the, the power of, of what we're doing here, you know, the, women often ask, it's a very, very common question. What if I don't have anything to share? What if no one cares what I have to say? And I, I always say, it's just not actually mathematically possible for that, that's just, it's not even possible because there's definitely one person on the planet who needs your story, at least, right? The chances are there's thousands of people who are hungry, actively seeking what you have. But I always say, will, will writing and publishing this book change your life? And they say, yes, absolutely. And I said, there's your one person. What if the only person in the world who needs this story is you? Is that enough? And they say, yes. But of course, it's not just, we never write it for ourselves. We end up writing for others. But when we can settle in and say, oh, oh, I can do this for myself. And that's enough. And then I can show up for the countless people who also will benefit from what I have, it changes that story of what if I don't, right? What if I'm not, what if? Because that's the question. Women come and they, I, I've always wanted to do this, but what if? And we go through this process and I support them with those doubts and those questions all the way through. And then they go through that moment of panic and on, they're on the other side and they say, I, I just, I wrote a book. I, I can't believe I wrote a book. What else can I do? And it's then it's like, the sky's the limit. I can write another book. I can do this, I can do that. And it opens up this sense of possibility because we've up-leveled. We've tried something that we never knew we could do. And then we repeat the whole process again. We're like, well, what if I'm not good enough for that thing? And what if I can't? And da, 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 da. But we just go again and again and again. And this is where the, the cyclical nature of who we are, the masculine nature is really linear and doesn't allow for this sort of growth, collapse, rest, reiteration. And I love, I love the cyclical nature. It allows for us to, to evolve quite rapid, rapidly. Absolutely. And it's so insightful what you say, right? Kind of like having, look, what if it's just for you, right? Would it help you? And how many times have you and I, we picked up our own book and kind of flip and like, did I really actually write those things? You know, like, did I really actually write this thing? Oh my this is God, really right? good. Who wrote like, this? Exactly. Like, oh, this and that. And then kind of like, and then you take it to the next step, which is, what if I just take care of one person, right? And that's kind of like, I remember yeah. just before getting on the tech stage, uh, I said a prayer and one of the lines in my prayer is that God just help me to take care of one person, just one person in the audience, you know, because it's like, if you take care of one, it says if you take care of everybody, right? So if you just help me take care of, because taking care of so many people is scary. Like, I don't think I have the capacity to do that. But if I can take care for you, Sierra, okay, that's not so scary. Just you and me, right? We're going to go step here and the yep. next step here and the next step here. And then you mentioned right in the beginning, like, when my daughter grow, grows up, what kind of world I want her to live in? What kind of message I want her to see? What kind of people do I want her to, you know, have her, you know, rather than having listening to the radio, which like people would tell you, it's like brainwashing, I think the radio, people would tell you what to listen. But you're like, 
what if my daughter has a choice to listen to this, this, and this? So talk us through about kind of like, is she your guiding compass? Is she kind of like, because you mentioned like uh, Red Threat Publishing is about thought leaders, right? Trailblazers, living their legacy, living, planting yep. the seeds. So it's kind of like your daughter, your guiding compass and kind of like in your vision of creating the world. I know I can see you smiling now talking about your daughter. Um. Again, I'm gonna tell a story and then make sure I answer your question, okay? So she's almost seven and she loves pink and dolls and all the things. When I was growing up, mm -mm, okay? So, but I've let her do her thing. And it was just the other day, she turned to me and she said, mommy, I'm, I'm not like you, I'm, and I said, that's good. You, you don't need to be like me. You need to be like you. You're the only one who can figure out what that is and be that. And my job is to help you figure out how to be you. I'm still just figuring out how to be me, but I don't need you to be me. I need you to be you. And she said, well, that's good because I'm not a princess. And I was like, great. <laughs> She's like, I don't actually like pink anymore. I'm rocker. And I was like, okay, you do you, this is awesome. And I said, let me tell you a secret. When I was little, I never wore pink. And she said, oh, what? And she thought it was the most amazing thing. But we had this conversation about, you know, and she's turning seven, which is, is this developmental moment of stepping back from the parents, recognizing one's own identity and asserting one's self as separate from. And I, from being a teacher and studying the brain development, this happens at various times in our lives. It happens again when we're seven, it happens again as teenagers, and I'm watching it happen now for women in their 30s. Some women, you know, like maybe not always in their 30s, but there's a moment when we see that we've been trying to be someone else. We've literally been trying to be a certain way and stepping back and recognizing what it means to try to be ourselves. The permission to do that, finding that space of, who am I, who can I be, is huge. And so to actually answer the question, I, I'm not gonna say that she's my, my compass, but I think it's this space that we're creating together. It's this dynamic um, because I am showing up for her and then she feeds some of that back to me, but in her own way. And it's, it's this, it's like a braid, like we're weaving together. Um, I'm bringing everything I know, she's bringing everything she knows. And there's something that we lose as we grow up that she still has so fiercely and clearly. And so I'm studying that. And then there's something that comes with time that I'm hoping to be offering her and together we're creating this dynamic play um, and, and weaving, weaving a life, weaving a reality together, which is so much fun. Absolutely. I mean, I'm having a, not a daughter because I have a daughter, which is a close, she's seven. So, you know, your daughter and I were about a year apart or so, a few months apart, but it's completely different way to see it. Um, I know I have both a son and a daughter. Um, uh, but it's just amazing, isn't it? Kind of like, like my friend always tells me that your children are, are a gift, they're your teachers. Yes. Like they're there to teach you certain things. Like my kids would just tell me straight up, you know, this and this, like, it's not something that I grow up with. Like I grow up with whatever my mom tells me, like, you know, that's it. Um, it's that kind of generation, that kind of culture. Um, but my daughter was like, oh, my God, like, you know, a different 
can I map part of that kind of modeling, parent, um, uh, parenting modeling to my children, it would go the opposite way. So I think you and I will have, like you said, the weaving, the braiding, the dance, right? Sometimes you're leading, sometimes you're following, sometimes you twirl, sometimes you jump, whatever it is that you do um, in a dance. Um, so Sierra, I kind of like, let's kind of like bring it all together there. Now you've talked about how you started looking into the small turning points, um, being courageous in terms of, you know, your, your voices, your mess, and what if you can just help yourself? Or what if you can just help one person? And having a team to support you all the way. What's your one biggest advice that you can share with women who has this desire to share their message, to whether to write a book or whatever it is that they want, whatever platform that they choose. And what's one thing, one action that they can take to like, you know, I'm just taking that one step today. Is it not a big step? It's just that one tiny step. So what that one step would be? Well, and, and I love that you said this because I, I think actually the one step is not to think about the absolute destination way out here, right? The step is to actually just recognize what is the next, what is that one next action? Um, because we can't, we can't see who we can become. We are absolutely blind to it. If we make it too much of a big deal, we freak out and stop. If we decide to stay with what we know, we also are not moving forward. So the, I would say that the distinguishing factor for me has been the willingness to go screw it up, <laughs> but just take that one next step, fall down, get up again. It does, just because you fall down doesn't mean that wasn't the right step. It probably means you're just walking on a path that you haven't walked before. And that's awesome. You're off the trail, going to figure out your own adventure. And that's totally terrifying. But recognizing that listening to those little whispers, taking those little risks so that if you do this once a day for 365 days, how significantly different will you be a year from now? A year ago, I was nowhere near I, where I am now. And a year from now, I can't even conceive where that will be. I'll probably be five to 10 times further forward than I can imagine at this point. So I don't need to try to put myself in that space but like we're here today showing up for ourselves, for the audience, for one another, if we can do that much every single day, I call it a micro shift that, because if, again, if we try to take on something that's too big, my, my response is always like, I'll do it later or freak out, never mind, just kidding. I, it's too much, I can't. But if I can do this, if I can have this conversation with you today, what else do I need to do? I've, I've done what I need to do today. I just need to be able to do it again tomorrow. And that's what's so cool about the small stuff is I can show up every day and it's, it's the small actions multiplied. The impact happens, not maybe tomorrow or the next day. It happens over time when these small actions add up. So I would say break it down into the smallest next step. That is so awesome. That like, step. what is just the next step, right? What is just one thing I have to do today? What is the one thing I have to do tomorrow? And the next one will be open up for you. You'll be revealed for the next one. And I love what you said about, you know what, like the willingness to mess it up. Like, every yeah. master was once a disaster, wasn't it? Like, that's kind of like, uh, that's how you grow, that's how you learn, that's how you know. And um, the, the, the willingness to mess up and get back up again. I remember Lady Gaga in her Oscar winning speech, she's wearing a beautiful black dress. She's like, this isn't about winning. It's about the number of times you're willing to get back up again and go for your dreams. And Sierra is kind of like channeling Lady Gaga today because you're like, 
no, I messed up. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Oh, but I'm yeah. getting back up again. It's the one thing I have, like you said, today, I've already done this. I've already had this conversation today. And it's going to be heard by thousands and millions of people along the years. So we've already done now. We're kind of like, what is there left to, right? Like, kind of like waiting in there. So darling, let's wrap up with one final question. What is the one fun thing that you do that people don't know about? Ooh. <clears throat> Oh, that's a fun question. Um, <laughs> I know. So, um, again, my daughter, like you said, is is definitely the teacher I never knew I needed, and she's an Aries. She's all fire. I am chill. I am like quiet, and so when it's time to go to bed, I if I were raising myself as a child, I'd get the, I'd get quiet, we'd turn off the lights, we'd have a story and a song and sort of bring it down. But not in this house. In this house, we need a 15 minute rocker dance party. And this is how we go to bed. We crank up the music, we jump around and get crazy because that is actually how she falls asleep. It is the opposite of what I need but I've learned it's what she needs. And it's, I think to bring it into the context of this is like, just because it's not what we would do for ourselves doesn't mean it's not exactly what we all need. It's like the, the adaptability of recognizing um, that there's so many ways to do something and that the way that is familiar to us doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just the one that we know the most and and so going down a new route can be more fun, more effective, um, and silly. I think she's my like silly guru. I, before her, and even instinctually, I think I'm a, I take myself a little too seriously. And so she puts me back into this playful mood. Um, a 15 minute dance party can change the world. So if you're in that face down moment, and you don't know what to do, consider a 15 minute dance party. That is absolutely cool. Like, oh my God, it's just so fun, isn't it? Like having your daughter, having that. Um, it's the same with my daughter. She loves drawing. She can draw. She, she's the best drawing at ponies and horses because that's what she loves. And me, I would draw a rock and that's like everything would look like a rock. Like, you know, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, but, um, <clears throat> and I also wanted to acknowledge you because what you said there touched a really important point and the, the willingness, the openness, and mostly the acceptance of allowing other people, whether their principles, their values, their heritage, their culture, yeah. to the willingness and the openness, and most importantly, the acceptance, right, for them to be who they are. And like, you know, if you can do that with your daughter and your authors, which you're already doing now, imagine the impact of people being open the willingness and the acceptance of one another we may not look different we have different principles and values and culture and heritage how we do things but that is the key in kind of like having a positive impact to society so Saria Sierra darling thank you so much for this conversation today with such joy and laughter uh, but also full of heart-based um, wisdom that I hope that the listeners are, uh, I know that they are appreciative and great and thankful for that. So thank you so much, Sierra, and thank you everybody for listening. This is your host, Dr. Isbihar Jamil, and to the next episode, tell yourself, yes, I can. And so it is done. So Sierra, say bye to everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.